It's realizing that not only can the stories of ordinary people hold attention, they can be even more compelling and more relatable. Talking to you and telling the good, the bad, and the ugly, and you not judging me, has been fabulous. I was just finishing up an international book, and I was just starting to get back onto the streets of New York, and she was the very first person I saw. She's got this huge fur coat. He said, I like your outfit. So I said, hey, you look great. And she called me over. She said, let me ask you something. Why do you white boys always wear shorts in the winter? It was like 30 something degrees. It was surreal. The city that never sleeps was completely dead. It was only supposed was only to be supposed for to two be weeks. For two weeks. I just miss people. I'm so sick of staring, staring at, screen. at a screen. I want to feel a connection. connection. My first thought was this pandemic's going to completely stop humans of New York because I can't approach people on the streets anymore. Next thing you knew, I had an inbox with 30,000 stories from people around the world. I just started interviewing my own audience and it kind of launched a new era. Some of the stories in the inbox were so fascinating that I, I've done multiple part stories on them. I'm looking for the story of somebody who's been through some sort of transformation. You know, I think the beauty is in the subtleness and the realness and getting into the granular level of people's lives. Have you seen this? Stop what you're doing. You've got to read this. Check out Humans of New York. And then Tangeray happens. Coming to New York was the best thing that ever happened to me. I love it. She has a story and she has a voice. And she had a way of describing things that was completely unique. All I did was gay bars, drag queen contests. I was amazing on sex calls. And I think those two things combined was what captivated everybody. We throw cash to her and she her. was just telling me these wild stories about the 1970s and I was fascinated by them. You're a go go dancer. Then I spent six months with her and I wrote the 35 post story. These posts are exactly what I've been missing. This is almost as good as a hug I from never my thought mom. I could connect so strongly with someone I've never met. The thing that I built the story around was her quest to create an identity for herself and her use of all of these different characters to do so. When this photo was taken, 10,000 men in New York City knew my name. It's this magical juxtaposition of complete anonymity, of not knowing the person, and extreme intimacy, of learning things about them that they might not have told anybody else. He was really scared of my wheelchair when I met him, so it didn't seem like it would work out. I just want to live under the same roof with my son and his mom. In 10 years of doing Humans of New York, I had never written an Instagram post that was above the limit of 2,200 characters. I have not written a post in the past six months that was not right at the limit. I want the photos to move through time. I want the person to grow in the photos. And the storytelling is getting deeper and deeper. That is why the story of Tangaroo tapped into such a nerve. It's always been evolving so quickly and morphing and changing. You can never pin it down. How do I make it fresh? How do I make it different? How do I continue to make it compelling? And how do I continue to make it new?